Hi, I'm Natalie of So Hungry Hippie, and today I'm going to walk you through making the Berry Cute Bag. In this pattern, we have two size options, small and large, and if it's your first time through, you might want to make the bigger size. Sometimes big is easier to sew, so it's up to you. We are going to be incorporating some TPU vinyl. This is So Hungry Hippie Clear Vinyl. And one thing you will probably want to do when sewing this is get yourself a Teflon sewing foot for your model of machine. It's really important to get the right foot and the right tools when you're working with new materials. This is easy to sew on a home sewing machine. I don't own an industrial and I make all my bags with vinyl on my home sewing machine. So I know you can do it too. You will probably want to get yourself set up with your Teflon foot, some sewing tools like your favorite rotary cutter, maybe a stiletto. I like to have mini post-its to label all my pattern pieces. Have your pattern nearby, either on your screen or printed out. Definitely, you will want to have sewing clips instead of pins. This way, there won't be permanent holes in the vinyl. I like to use uh, Guterman all-purpose thread, but any polyester high-quality thread will absolutely work. It's a little bit stronger than cotton and works really well when sewing vinyl. I also like to use a size 8012 Schmetz Microtex needle. Sometimes people refer to these as sharp needles. It just pierces the vinyl more easily and goes through really cleanly and nicely. So I think you'll like that. As always, take a piece of vinyl and play around a little bit if you're unsure or if you need to build your confidence first. Once in a while on certain machines, you wanna play with your tension. But for most of us on our machines at home, everything is just the same. Okay, let me show you the two size options for the bag we'll be making today. This is the large size and this is the small size. They are constructed exactly the same. The only difference is in the larger bag, we're using a little bit of Decoville light interfacing. Decoville light is feasible on one side and it's very thin. We keep it out of the seams so that it's not super bulky or anything. And I, I do that with the large size bag so that it still sits up nicely and has structure. The small bag is small enough that our vinyl components of the bag give it the body that it needs to support itself and stand up nicely. As you can see, we are incorporating knife pleats. I'll show you how to do these. They're very easy, but I think it gives it a really pretty touch. On the back side, you have slip in pockets. And on this one, you can see here, here's the main slip in pocket. And I like to put pens or something, maybe ruler or long and skinny things in these side pockets. On the front, you have a clear vinyl pocket so that you can see what you're putting in here. On the small size bag, it is a small pocket, but you can still put little things in there. It's nice and cute. And on the inside, we also have one vinyl pocket in both sizes of the bag. And if by chance you would like to add a pocket on the other side, you can. If you can get more materials, make your bag your own. On the large size, I like to divide the vinyl pocket so there are two compartments, but that's self-preference. You can do whatever you want to do. Oh, I did it in the small size as well. On the edges, we are using the fabric to do a binding treatment so there are no uh, raw or sharp edges of the vinyl. It's not sharp, but I just say sharp so that you know that all the um, raw edges are treated and everything will look very professional. So I will put my sample bags away. One last look. The straps or handles are also made out of fabric. I do use a little bit of SF-101 in this bag, very easy. Again, it's a fusible and it's very thin. It just lets us make the fabric uh, easier to handle and it gives a really nice professional look at the end. 
I like to have my irons nearby. You will see me working with a regular size iron as well as a mini. If you're making the small bag, you might just want to plug in your mini iron if you have one. Okay, let's get started. I will be, I have all my pieces cut out already, but I'm going to take you overhead and show you how I label everything. And then we're going to fuse our interfacings, uh, bind our vinyl edges, and we'll make the bag. We are using the Wishwell collection. It's called Strawberry Season. This is from Robert Kaufman. Okay, so as you can see here, I like to cut out all my pieces and use my little mini post-it notes to label everything. And I do this, I name them exactly what they are named in the pattern so that there is no confusion later. I lay and orientate the fabric so that it is the same way that it is constructed in the bag. So as you can see on this piece, this bag is a little bit wider than tall. So when I label it, I do it so that when I grab this piece of fabric, I'm not confused. It's ready to go. And what I mean by that is if I labeled it like this, I would think that the bag was this kind of shape. So I just wanted to clarify that really quickly. Label it, if you need to use a pin or a clip to hold it in place, do so. And this will just save you some brain power <laughs> during construction of the bag. I went ahead and cut out my vinyl pockets. This is the one on the inside. Isn't this vinyl so cute? I designed this just for us so we could make this bag. These are tiny little strawberries. And so same thing here, I'm gonna orientate it as the vinyl is used in the bag. Here's the exterior front pocket vinyl, same thing. And just for safekeeping in case there's a strong breeze, I'll use a clip to hold those in place. I've already cut out my lining main body. This is a little bit bigger than our exterior fabric piece because if you read through the pattern first you'll understand we're adding a bottom contrast to the exterior main body piece so yes you're right if you cut according to the cutting chart don't worry trust the process all right so what i usually do is i grab another table or sometimes i even use my floor give it a quick sweep whatever, and I lay out all my pieces so that I can easily see them when it's time to grab and start sewing. I have cut out my Decoville light already. We don't get to that for a little while, so I'm just gonna set it up there. The binding we are creating on our own, so per the cutting chart, you're cutting that at two inches and then times length and we will make it like extra wide double fold. If you have packages of rights, already pre-made binding sitting around in your stash, you can absolutely use that as well. Okay, let's cut some of the SF 101 and interface our main body pieces. Okay, as you're using the pattern and your cutting chart, feel free to grab a pen or a pencil or a marker and check mark off as you're cutting out the pieces so that you're really squared up and ready to rock. And there's no confusion whatsoever if other people interrupt you while you're sewing. Not that that ever happens, right? <laughs> okay, I am going to cut my SF-101 and fuse it and we will put this bag together. My iron, I keep on full heat. I don't use any steam. There are instructions on the back of the interfacing with SF-101 that you can follow. It usually grabs and fuses really quickly and easily. 
I don't know about you, but I like using those wool mats, the gray ones, because it gets really hot underneath at the same time and really allows for a nice crisp fuse. And the reason I interface the fabric is it makes it behave better, easier to sew. A little bit of interfacing is totally worth it. Okay, so one of the exterior main bodies is interfaced. Let's do the other one. I'm gonna keep this piece right here because I may need it. Did I mention I'm making the large size bag? It's exactly the same construction as the small, so if you want to make the small, you're fine. It's the same. When I go to add Decoville, you just won't do that part for the small. Okay, now I'm going to do the contrast bottom pieces. I do the contrast for the outside of the bag with the lining fabric, and that is reflected on the cutting chart. So let's go overhead. I like to utilize the straight edges whenever I can to make less cutting for myself and a little bit of a time save. There we are. So now I'm going to bring my ironing surface here. I'm just doing this for the camera. Please iron on your ironing board surface not on your cutting mat and surface. I do like to make sure and press from both sides. All right. So now I need to interface the lining main body. I just found the first post-it note. Smooth it out. Okay, so if you have any 
excess around the edges. Trim it up now because you don't want to later think you're sewing the fabric and you miss it in the seam allowance. So I usually give it a look and then come in with my ruler and trim away any excess a step 101. It's usually not much. Oh, this side has quite a bit. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to make sure those are oriented right. and replace my label. Okay, I'm going to go back to the pattern and see what's next. Oh, the back slip-in pocket. We need that one still. So let me get my fabric. Or did I already cut that? Front pocket. Here it is. I need a little bit more interfacing for that. Okay, there we are. So now the next step, we're on step three now in the pattern. We're going to make the binding so that we can bind the top edge of the in interior vinyl pocket and top and bottom edge of the front pocket. So these are already labeled so I won't be confused. I'm gonna push my excess vinyl out of the way and I'm gonna grab my strips of binding. I usually cut more than the pattern calls for just in case. I like to have extra binding around, so don't worry about my strips if you don't have this many strips. This is just a me thing that I do. So my two inch strip here, I'm going to fold in half, raw edges to raw, ed raw edge to raw edge. And then I open it up and then bring the raw edges to meet that middle crease and press. And then fold it over one more time. Okay, so I'll take my inside pocket first. And I'm going to place that top edge right at that middle crease and fold this over and I'll use lots of clips 
to hold this in place. This is how I attach binding to vinyl because you do not want to put it on the traditional way of binding. You'll have too many holes and you risk perforating the vinyl. So do it this way. It's kind of a cheater method way. It works. And if you need more clips than this, just grab more clips. I'm just going to sew that down to secure it. I do have my Teflon foot on because the foot will hit that vinyl and you don't want it to stop sewing on you. If your machine is not advancing the vinyl, that's usually what's wrong. Is you need that nonstick foot underneath. Now, if you feel like the bed of your machine is sticky, just go ahead and place a Teflon baking sheet on the bed of the machine, tape it underneath, and your machine bed is nice and slick. You shouldn't have a problem with this vinyl because it's not sticky. But I just want to add that tip in there. So I'm going to put the label on there and set this one aside. And now we will do the front pocket, the front pocket, top and bottom edge. So the exact same process. So now I'm going to do that for the bottom edge. You will have your scrap piece long enough to just use the other half. I did not cut mine to the cutting chart here. I was trying to use some scrap fabric. So don't worry, you won't have to make binding a third time. You'll just use the other half. Make sure that that vinyl is at that middle crease there. Okay. 
Now we're going to sew down that. I'm just using a three millimeter stitch length, by the way. Nothing special. And now that one's on. Go ahead and trim any excess away from the edges, although it will get covered anyways, but it usually helps me trim the threads when I trim away the excess on the sides. Very cute. Make sure that when you place this pocket on the bag, it's directional. That vinyl is directional. So have your strawberries going the right way. I'll remind you of that. Okay. So now we're on step four and we are placing that exterior pocket on one piece of the exterior main body. So that will be this one. It's going to be two inches up from the bottom edge. So what I like to do is lay my acrylic ruler on here all the way across. So then I know I'm two inches up. And then here's my front pocket. Now a quick way to make sure that you're centering everything to fold everything in half and make a crease. That way you don't have to measure. You just match those center creases. Let's get this on the mat correctly here. Two inches up, matching those centering creases. And there we are. Now, for this piece, you can do one of two things. You can use some pins right along the edges because it will be covered later with handles and knife pleats. Or you can use some double-sided sticky tape to help hold things in place. So I'm gonna show you this method. I think it's the easiest rather than messing with pins. I just put a tiny little strip on this outer edge and that way it'll grip the fabric and stay in place while I'm trying to sew it down. Now if you don't have that, you can use your pins. So just keep them within the seam allowance so that you don't see holes later. Okay. This isn't super permanent, so if you misplace it, it's okay to peel it up and replace it. Make sure your pocket is centered and straight. Okay, so what I like to do at this point is just hold it up and make sure it looks straight. Sometimes I'll even put it on the floor and kind of look over it like this. Or if you have a quilt wall, a design wall, pin it up on your quilt wall and make sure it looks good. And now with your Teflon foot on, we're gonna sew down the sides and the bottom and secure the pocket to the exterior piece. Let me move this, clean off my sewing machine a bit. Here we go.
There's the pocket. Okay, now we can turn the page. We're on to step five. We are preparing the handles. Just like we did the double fold binding, the handles are made the same way. If you want to interface your handles, you can. I find that because it's four layers of fabric, it works for me without the interfacing, it's okay. But that is your discretion, up to you. Okay, so here are my handles. Two strips, four inches by 43 for the large bag. Look at the cutting chart if you're making the small bag. I'm going to bring my ironing surface again and we do the exact same thing. This is so easy, it makes a really nice handle. So here we go. I am on high heat. Makes the pressing just a little faster. Now we're going to bring it in and meet that center crease. Okay, you know the next step, fold it over and a final press. Okay, so now I like to take this right to the machine and first I sew down the open edge so that it's closed and then I sew the folded edge so that the strap has a balanced look. And I'm just going to keep it on the three millimeter stitch length and away we go. Remember not to pull or push on your strap. Let the feed dogs do the work. I take it out from the machine, I go back up to the top, and I just flip it over. And this will help stop the twist as well. Let's take it to the pressing station and give it a press. Okay, now I'm going to do the second strap exactly the same way.
Okay, our straps are done. And we'll put those on in a few minutes. I like to just make sure that they're exactly the same length at this point. Nothing worse than having one strap quarter inch longer than the other. All right, cool, those look great. Okay, so now we are on step six, which is preparing the knife pleats. So it might sound difficult, but knife pleats are very simple. They're even easier than box pleats. So we are going to fold this in half like this and give it a press. I really love how this fabric is not directional, so it doesn't really matter whichever way you fold it. On the diagram, I have the raw edges at the top and the folded edge down here. And then I'm gonna bring in my ruler and a friction pen, and I'm gonna mark half inch increments all the way down. Now you can eyeball this if you don't want to take the time to make these markings. But if you want your knife pleats to be correct or balanced, then take the time to make these half inch markings. Very simple. Okay, so I've marked half an inch increments all the way down this strip. And then you're gonna take one mark to one mark. And usually I would be on my pressing surface and I would give this a press. So let me just bring that over. And then you'll take the next one. Let's, let's take our glass head pin and pin that. And now you'll take the next and do that one. I'm gonna use my smaller pins rather than these really big ones. And then that one, the next hash mark, matching the next hash mark. And then I'm going to this hash mark and I'm matching it with this hash mark. And the pleats are all going in the same direction underneath here. I guess it doesn't matter if we use a bigger pen. Ow. <laughs> See how giant that looks, that pen next to those little glass head pins? So now this hash, has, hash mark will go to this hash mark. And I'm pushing the pleat so that it's folded in the same direction. And now down to the next one. Hash mark to hash mark. After you make one, you might be able to just do this portion at the machine while you're sewing, and especially if you're experienced. 
you won't probably need to pin all these. But it's not wrong if you do. Whatever way works for you is the right way. Now, don't get into too much of a tizzy about perfection here. Nobody's going to notice if it's not absolutely perfect. Just get this done. The detail at the end is a treat for the eye. So don't panic and don't worry too much. Okay, we're almost there. So this is a little longer than what we need, but we want that on purpose because we're gonna sew down that top edge and then you want enough to cover this entire front of the bag. So I wanted to give you a little bit extra just in case, all right? But first, let's sew this down. Now, since the pleats are going in this direction, I want to feed it through the machine this way so it's very easy to sew. So let's head over to the machine. I'm not going to take off my Teflon foot, but if you prefer to, you can. So now I'm going to put this in the machine so that the pleats are facing this way and it's very easy to sew. If I were to place it in like this, I'd be fighting the machine or the fabric and it would want to crumple and be it just be a pain to sew. So make it work for you here. I place the pins low enough so that I can keep them in as I'm sewing. I'm not sewing over any pins here. And I just keep it at a 3 millimeter because then I don't have to worry about changing anything. All of these stitches will be covered with the handle. Keep it about a quarter of an inch from that raw edge if you can. And go slow. Now I can remove all these deadly pins. If you have a ruffler foot for your machine, you can substitute a ruffler foot and just do ruffles instead of these knife pleats. It's completely your choice. I broke my ruffler foot, so I can't use that little trick. Okay, and we're going to do this twice, one for each side. So on the second round, we will fast forward this for you. It's exactly the same process. And again, if you're making the small bag, exactly the same. Your strip will just be a different length. Okay, there's that. And now per the diagram, let's just check the diagram here. The raw edge, the raw edge is even with the raw edge of this final pocket. So if it helps you, which it does me, Place a little double sticky tape all along here so it will just hold it very easily in place the whole way down. Don't worry about this gumming up your needle. For me, it absolutely does not. If you find it does gum up your needle, maybe you need to switch your needles or you can just do sections of tape instead of the whole way down.
Okay, there's that. So now placing this is going to be very easy. I want the ruffle all the way up, so I'm going to go right there, there. Just make sure it's straight. And then I can just trim excess ruffle away. So now I'm going to sew all the way down. You can tell when I'm hitting the vinyl and the fabric and the ruffle. But it's not that thick. So you should be okay. And there it is. Super cute. So now we're going to do the exact same thing for the other side. And then just to give you a visual so you're not panicking, let me take you overhead because the handle, the strap, covers the raw edge. See how it just covers it and everything is beautiful? That's where we're headed. Okay, let's do this second knife pleat strip. Okay, here's this. So now we're going to sew down the side here. Let me turn it so that it's easy for me to sew. And here we go again. Okay, so make sure, make sure that the folded edge of these knife pleats is 
towards the inside. The raw edge is on the outside. Okay, now I'm going to sew this down. Okay, so this is now attached. No, we can add the strap to this front front bag and then we'll do the pocket on the back of the bag and the hand the strap handle and then the exterior bag is almost there. Okay. So now we're going to attach the strap and I'm going to take you overhead because I I say to place this strap two and a quarter inches from the outer side edge. But the main concept you want to grasp here is that we are covering this entire raw edge. So if you need to adjust it slightly because you want to show more ruffle or you want to cover more ruffle, you can do that. It's your discretion. But for me, one, two, and about a quarter, two and a quarter from that side edge is just about perfect. Okay? So I am going to use double-sided sticky tape again. I love it. It helps me keep everything in place. And I'm just going to place a strip right there because I don't want this handle to shift as I'm attaching it. Now don't be worried about the bottom. The bottom gets covered up when we attach the contrast bottom. So just follow one, one through one by one each step because we've got you taken care of here. If you're finding that your tape is struggling to attach, I like to just hit it with the iron quick and that usually helps it. But be careful and do not touch your iron to the vinyl pocket. You'll melt it and that would be devastating. Now that we've come this far, okay, sometimes that just gives it a little oomph to attach. There we are. Okay, so I'm gonna do one side first. Make sure it's the side you like best that's facing up. Now you can also use pins here if you don't wanna use the tape. And then you're gonna bring your strap over. Make sure it is not twisted. See how it's not twisted. And then attach it on this side. Again, two and a quarter inches from the side edge. Two and a quarter, two and a quarter. And you wanna make sure it's straight all the way up and down. And make sure that the strap is not twisted. See how this is flat? Nothing is twisted. So now I can sew all the way up and over and down and up, over and down. I stop about an inch away from the top and that's so when we put the bag together with the lining, it's very easy to move the strap out of the way. So I'm going to measure one inch down and make a line. That's where I'm going to sew. Same for this side. That's where I turn and go down the other side. Okay. Now I could take off my Teflon foot at this point, but I still am going to need it for the interior vinyl pocket. So I'm just gonna keep it in place. It won't hurt anything. And it'll sew this just fine. Here I am at that one inch mark. So my needle is down. I'm going to pivot across and sew across. Needle down, 
raise my foot, and now I'm coming down this edge. You can sew right on that line you sewed earlier or just beside it, it's up to you. And that side is attached. Let's do the other side. If you need to put on a walking foot for this part, you can. That's gonna be machine dependent if you need that or not. Okay, so that's on. Now I can trim the excess away along the bottom and we will attach our contrast bottom. Where did I put my rotary cutter? Here it is. That's just cleaning up that bottom edge a bit there. See that? Okay, now these are labeled so I know exactly how they are, where they are, interfaced already, good to go. So this is gonna be down here. So we place it right sides together, matching those raw edges. Now you can use pin or clips, it doesn't matter. This is all fabric that we're touching here. Okay, let's sew right along that edge. So now I'm just going to fold that down and use my iron. I'm going to press that down. Remember, do not hit the vinyl with your iron. It's up here. I'm just pressing that seam allowance down because I'm going to top stitch across here. Okay, let's top stitch to hold that seam down all the way across. one side of the bag is complete. We will come back and do our boxed corners after we get the other side done. Okay, so now we're doing the back slip-in pocket. Here's my back slip-in pocket piece that I've labeled. And I'm gonna fold it in half. So here we are, folding it in half. It's going all across the bottom of the exterior main body bag. So here is the exterior, excuse me, the exterior main body bag. See how it has to go all the way across? So if you by chance folded it this way, well that doesn't go all the way across. So you know that you gotta repress it. Okay, so here's this. Now if you want to, and I, I think it's a good idea, is you can put a small piece of Decoville here. Remember the Decoville interfacing is thin and easy to sew. So I usually have a scrap piece sitting around and I will cut it just a smidge smaller than the size of this pocket. So whatever size bag, you're, well, you don't need this for the small bag, actually. So this is, I need it about a little smaller than six inches high. 
and about 14 inches across. So I'm just going to cut this really quickly and show you. It's very low stress, low, don't worry about this. Okay, so here is this piece. There is a shiny side and that's the glue. So place the shiny side down, centering it. See how I have some space on each side and space along the bottom. I'm taking it all the way up to that crease and I'm, oop, I'm gonna bring this pocket down and I'm gonna press. So the Decoville is all the way up at this top folded edge. Let me remove the bag piece. All the way up at this top edge, I'm gonna fuse it, and then I'll top stitch across the top of this pocket, and it'll look really good on the bag. Again, using high heat. Okay, I'm going to top stitch this across the top of the bag. I like to give it another press really quick. So now we'll take that remaining back of the bag and we align these raw edges with the raw edge of the bottom here. You can use pins or clips. I'll use pins this time. And we'll attach the pocket. I'm going to sew down the sides and then across the bottom. Now, I know you want to, but don't sew down the middle of this pocket yet. It gets split into compartments when we attach our handles. So I've got a little trimming to do on the side of this, just to clean up the side edge a bit. All right, just a smidge. So here's my back of the bag. And now we will attach the other strap that we already made right here. Okay, so again, two and a quarter inches in from the side edge. I will use my ruler to help me out with that. Two and a quarter. So there it is. All the way up. Now I could use double sticky tape or I can just pin this. It doesn't matter, whatever works. And then I'm going to make sure this is not twisted in any way. And again, two and a quarter inches from this side. Now you can see how the pocket is divided into sections, two tall skinny sections and one main compartment. And this is nice and stiff because of that Decoville light. So it'll stay closed. It won't gap open and be all floppy on you. Now, if you wanted to add a snap or some kind of closure, you absolutely can, but I'm gonna keep this simple. I sew it down. Remember, just like on the other side, you wanna stop one inch from the top. This is where I'll cross over to the other side here. 
And this one is right here. I'm going to turn that pin around so it's easier to sew. There we go. Now let's sew it down. I'm sewing so that I don't catch it on myself. So now the back is almost done. We need to add the contrast bottom. I'm just going to press this really quick. Okay, just like on the other side, we have that strip for the contrast bottom. So I'm going to attach that. This is what it will look like. So right sides together, match those raw edges, pin in place, and sew. And then press it open, seam allowance facing down and top stitch. Pins come out. Okay, we're going to top stitch all the way across. Switch camera. And this side of the bag is done. Good job. So now let's make our boxed corners. These, for each size of the bag, it's different. So I'm doing the large size, so it's a two inch boxed corner. So what I'm gonna do is use our box corner template because it's real easy. Okay, so I'm gonna come down over here. Two inches from that outer seam. So let me clean this up so this doesn't look wrong to you. Sometimes, you just have to come in after sewing and clean things up a bit. That was some interfacing here. Okay. So now from that outer edge, I'm going to mark a two inch box, little box here. There's that side. And now I'm going to do it on this side. and on the other corner. Use some sharp scissors and really get this precise. Okay, so we have two sections of the front and we're gonna place them right sides together and sew down the sides and bottom. 
Let me take you overhead. You want to line up those side edges and the bottom edge and use as many pins or clips that you need to to hold it in place. I always flip it over and check from the other side just to make sure everything is lined up correctly. And it looks like it is. So here we go down the sides and across the bottom. Now you'll take the corners, pull them apart, and pinch so that they look like this. I nest my seams, so one seam is going to go one way, one way, the other seam will go the other way, and I'll put a clip there to hold that, and then put this through the machine. You might want to go another go just inside where you just sewed. Okay, let's take it overhead for the other side. So here's the corner. I stick my hand in the bag and kind of pop that open and then match those seams. One seam goes one direction, one goes the other direction. However, they kind of naturally want to sit and lock in place. And then I put a clip there to hold it. And now I'm going to sew all the way across this edge. Make sure you're lock stitching here. And I'm going to sew again. This is the part of the bag that really gets the most stress. All right. So now this is, once we pull this right sides out, we are moving on to step 14, the lining of the bag. But at least here you feel like you could take a break because your bag is taking form, looking good, taking shape and looking like a bag. Exciting. All right, let's move on to the lining. So you're going to have the lining main body pieces on the work surface and grab your vinyl pocket. We only put it on one side, but again, if you want to put it on both sides, you can absolutely do that if you have enough vinyl. So here is one side of the bag, and we place this so that it is one inch, the bottom is one inch up from the bottom of this edge. So I can see it here on my cutting mat, and that's how I'll place it. If you need to draw a line across or use your acrylic ruler, you can do that as well.
Now I left the Teflon foot on because now we're going to need it to attach this pocket. After this part, if you want to change to your regular foot, you can. There's the pocket. If it helps you to put double sticky tape along the bottom edge, you can do that. Okay. I'm going to sew along the bottom edge first. And there's the inside pocket. Now, I like to fold this in half and divide it into two. And that prevents the pocket from sagging outward and not having the best structure. So what I do is fold it in half and make a crease. Kind of this old trick I use all the time. And then I'll sew from the bottom up along that crease. Now, if you're having a hard time seeing it, just bring in your ruler to help make a little mark, like with a friction pen or something like that. Whatever helps you to see it. So I know that this is 14 and a half across. So if I come in and measure seven and a quarter, that is my centering mark. I'll do it down here as well. So I just match those up then. I don't think that's going to show up on camera, so I'm going to use this pink marker for you. That doesn't really show up either. And the Teflon foot is still on, and I start at the bottom. Go back and forth here a couple of times. Okay. And the pocket is complete. And now all we have to do on this part is make our boxed corners. And then we put these two sides together. All right, let's do our boxed corners. Again, this is the large size bag, so we're doing the two inches. We are almost ready to put this bag together. So I measure from the outer edges and draw my boxed corners. Now, if you have a smaller rotary cutter, like a 45 or a 28, it's easy to come in and just cut with this template. The bigger one, this is a 60, and it doesn't, it's not quite small enough to get that last little bite. But who's, who's looking? We'll go ahead and do it this way this time. I do recommend if you're new to boxed corners to measure this twice before cutting. Okay, there's one. And here's the other side. Again, the fabric is non-directional, thank goodness, so I don't have to think too hard about where I'm putting my corners. So as you can see, either way is fine. scissors or rotary cutter. Okay, just like before, we're going to place these right sides together, matching the bottom raw edges and the sides. All right, let's sew the sides and the bottom.
You're going to take your lining seam allowance just a smidge bigger. So the, the place where you sewed the vinyl pockets down, you're going just outside of that so that you don't see that stitching in the final bag. And then along the bottom. And then again, pull these sections apart to make your boxed corners. I've made a lot of these, so I don't need to hold it with a clip, but please do if you need to. Oh, looks like this side didn't sew. Okay, so now we've got the lining bag, we've got the exterior bag, and now we're going to put it all together. These are the last few minutes of construction. So if you need to take a minute for a quick break, do so. Now we're on step 17. Okay, so place the exterior main bag right sides together with the lining. So what I usually do is I put the exterior bag inside the lining bag, making sure that the right sides of the fabric are touching each other and the straps are tucked down inside. So you don't want your straps on the outside like this. You want them tucked down in, in between the layers. So the straps are in between the lining bag and the exterior bag. Then match up your side seams first and put a pin at the very top. Do that on each side of the bag. Nest those seams. And then what you can do is take your clips and use them all around the top of the bag, matching those raw edges, pushing your knife pleats and your straps down out of the way. You don't want to sew across any pleats or you can sew across the pleats, but you don't want to get them wrinkled up in the seam, if that makes sense. Make sure it's flat, the area that you're sewing across. If you're having trouble making this fit, no worries. It means you need to adjust your seam allowance on the sides, which you can do right now very easily. If you need to unpick a little bit of your seam allowance on the sides and adjust, do so now. It's much easier than trying to fix wrinkles in the bag later. All right, you're almost there. Sometimes I have to just readjust this a little bit. There we go, now it's right. Now I like to start sewing around the bag on, on or near a side seam so that if anything needs adjusting, I can easily do it at, around this area. And it's hidden from view. It's not in the main center front or center back. So I'm gonna take this to the machine. And we're gonna go all the way around the top. Remove pins or clips as you sew. Go as slow as you need to here.
if you have any overhang of vinyl, you can trim that away now. I generally don't trim seams in my bags unless it's super bulky, but in this instance, I do have a little bit of vinyl overhanging, so I'm just gonna trim that away. Make sure you take out all your pins. And then we're gonna pull the bags out so they're separated. And on the lining in the very bottom, I'm going to unpick a small section so I can turn the bag right sides out. Now the reason I didn't leave an opening in the very beginning is because I like to train that fabric to turn under at the end. I don't wanna to have to hand stitch this. So let's see here. I can use an unpicker or I can use a scalpel. I guess this is what I'm gonna use since it's handy. Oh, here's my scalpel. If you've never used a scalpel as a sewing tool, you should try it, it's very, very nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in here to this lining in the center because that's gonna be the easiest for me, I think. Unpick a few stitches. Big enough so that you can turn your bag out. With the vinyl and the Decoville, you might need a little bit more room than you usually do. So there's mine. And now we're gonna turn it right sides out. This is another reason why I just put that vinyl pocket on the inside on one side of the bag only because the more vinyl you're putting in your bag, it can, be, it can make it more difficult to turn. So your first time through, probably make it like the pattern says, and then feel free to do your options. Okay, I'm gonna put this cover on. Here's the bag. Now before I finish this up, I just check all my seams, including all the bottoms, all the corners, inside and outside. in case I need to sew anything together again. All right, we're gonna turn this under and I'm just gonna machine sew this very quickly. If you want to hand sew this shut, you can. Now stick the lining back down into the outer bag. Take your time on this part. You wanna make sure that you press down all your corners and you wanna roll that top seam so that it's perfect at the top. Sometimes I have to kind of do this and roll that edge a little bit. And I'm gonna give it a quick press with the iron too. That helps a lot. Also with that top edge, sometimes what can be helpful is taking a pin and kind of grabbing it and bringing it up. And then you'll take this to the iron and give it a press. See, sometimes I need to just bring it up with the edge of that pin. There it is. Okay. I'm gonna give this a quick press. Remember, do not hit the vinyl with your iron. And then at this point, what I like to do is 
a top stitch all the way around the top of the bag securing that handle at that very top edge here. So I'll take you to the machine and show you what I mean really quick. And you'll have to stop and start on this because if you don't have a free arm machine, it's just the nature of the game. So here we go. I'm going to roll that lining down a bit. Don't worry about top stitching over a, a knife pleat. You're just securing it all in place. It's fine. There we are. Okay. Give your bag a final press. You might need to come in and make sure that your corners on the lining are fully pressed out. Use your fingers and press them into each corner. Sometimes with that vinyl pocket, you have to coax it into place. There it goes. Now I'm going to do this side. And there's the bag. We've got that nice roomy pocket inside. See those strawberries? Handles. You could take this to the little farmer's market if you wanted to. It's just really cute. It's a cute little bag would make a great gift. All right, thanks for joining me and don't forget to share your bags. I'd love to see them. Peace, love sewing.